Hey there, what's new and exciting? Welcome to Exam AZ-900, Microsoft Azure Fundamental Study Guide. This is Episode 45, Azure Information Protection. My name is Tim Warner. Today's skill in the Microsoft Azure Fundamentals Objective Domain starts with the functional group Describe Security, Privacy, Compliance, and Trust, passes through Describe Security Tools and Features of Azure, and the skill name is Describe Azure Information Protection, also called AIP. As always, go to timw.info forward slash az900sg for the interactive course table of contents. The use case or business scenario for today's lesson is data leakage. The idea here is that your business is storing some or maybe all of its proprietary data in the cloud. You want to protect it all, of course, but when you're thinking about documents that may contain credit card numbers, passport IDs, social security numbers here in the States, the idea of, for instance, an employee forwarding corporate data, that is documents that contain sensitive data via email to recipients outside the organization is a scary proposition, as would be a colleague copying files from say, a OneDrive for Business repository to the employee's personal USB thumb drive or removable disk, and then again taking that home with them where the data lay unencrypted. Even using the Windows clipboard, copying and pasting, good old Control-C, Control-V, to take sensitive data out of corporate hands and put it in the employee's hands in a personal context. Scary stuff and overlaps with a problem in modern day information technology called shadow IT, where users are either maliciously or unintentionally, depending upon how well trained they've been, are installing unapproved applications and perhaps handling corporate data in a way that's not authorized. AIP is a cloud-based document classification and labeling solution specifically for your Microsoft Office documents. These classification labels that employees can add to documents or and or, I should say, you can have AIP apply to documents automatically based on rules you specify, can not only classify documents, for instance, a label of sensitive or top secret or PII for personally identifiable information, for public use, confidential, not only the notion of classifying documents, but also providing digital rights management, or DRM, protecting documents. As I said, the labeling can be left to your employees, or you can layer in automatic labeling. For example, you may have Azure Information Protection configured that if it spots a pattern match that looks like a passport ID or a social security number or a credit card number, AIP will automatically label that document and potentially restrict its access such that non-authorized parties can either not open it at all, or if they can, they've got a heavily restricted environment. They can't copy and paste, they can't email it, etc., etc., etc. Besides the notion of your employees manually labeling documents, you can configure Azure Information Protection to scan against your cloud-based and even on-premises document stores, and AIP will apply the appropriate labels and policies to those documents according to your rules. It's a really neat solution for Azure governance and information protection. If you've got experience as a systems administrator and local Active Directory, you might be familiar with Active Directory Rights Management Service, or RMS. Historically, I've found this service, while it works, it requires a fair amount of infrastructure and configuration and overhead. What I'm showing you here in this diagram from Microsoft, you can see the attribution URI in the lower left corner, is that AIP includes what's called an RMS connector that can extend your Azure information protection to on-prem such that you can either work in conjunction with local ADRMS or you could potentially decommission Active Directory RMS and use the Azure version to protect local data, that is, email that's stored locally on Exchange Server, documents that are in SharePoint server lists and libraries, or and or, I should say, file shares running in your domain environment. Really flexible service. It's a heck of a lot easier to use when all the infrastructure is hosted for you by Microsoft. This is true platform as a service or a PaaS solution. Okay, in this demonstration, I'm going to give you the top line need to know about Azure Information Protection. Hopefully, it will illustrate the theoretical conceptual details that I gave you earlier. I'm here in the Azure portal as a subscription owner and Azure AD Global Administrator. 
and I'm going to head on over to the Azure Information Protection Blade. Now, I'll just mention in passing that AIP is a premium feature and requires separate licensing, either Azure Active Directory premium licensing or depending upon what you're doing with Microsoft 365. So this is not a feature that's going to be available out of the box unless you're appropriately licensed. Again, there's a lot to this. I'm just going to stick to the very top line for your exam and certification success with AZ-900. I want to draw your attention here under classifications. We've got labels and policies. And there's a bunch of pre-built labels. These are the first one, two, three, four, five. And notice that a label can have one or more, I guess, sub-labels or tags. Confidential could be further classified as recipients only or for all employees, etc. The notion of how you build your labels, that's another whole architectural discussion that we don't need to be worried about. What I'm trying to transmit here is that you can use existing labels that Azure provides in addition to, as you see here, add a new label. Let me just jump in there for a second and show you some of the highlights. Besides just the metadata, the name and description, the real money here is, first of all, this notion of permissions. These documents, when you add protection or permissions, number one, it happens on the basis of role-based access control. We can add all members of my Azure AD, all authenticated users, or I can pick and choose different role members. And you notice that there's one, two, three, four pre-built roles. Co-owner, which essentially has full read-write access to documents with that label, all the way down to viewer. And you see some of the specific actions here, the ability to save, print, copy for email messages. Can you reply? Can you forward? Can you export? Can you run macros? Again, the encryption and protection here is happening in the cloud. And guess what? If, say, one of your colleagues were to copy an AIP-protected document to a thumb drive and then brought it home into their home environment, when they attempted to open the document, they'll be required, A, to authenticate into Azure using their Azure Active Directory ID, and B, they'll be subject to the restrictions that you've specified for that label. So you can't escape it. The protection is built right into the document. That's partially, I think, why you're limited to Microsoft Office documents. So that's the concept of the label, and you've got protection. And then the other thing that I think is really powerful are these conditions for automatically applying the label. And this is where you can have AIP look for sensitive information. It uses a string pattern matching technology that's been around seemingly forever called regular expressions or regex. But you see here all around the world, there's different categories of sensitive data, Australia, driver's license number, etc. And they're divided by industry. All oh, there's financial, medical and health, and privacy. And all of these match to a particular regular expression. In the U.S., for instance, social security number, or of course in the EU and France and Spain, these are heavily protected bits of information. And if we come out of this dialogue, the idea is if any of these conditions are met, this label is applied and you can force AIP to do that. You can add header, footer, and watermark data to the documents. This goes far beyond simple Azure governance. It really allows you to cover your data lifecycle very robustly. So what you do first is create your label library, and then your policy is going to be how you deploy those labels. I've got just the built-in global policy that affects all of your Azure AD users. The text is a little bit gray down here, but it says groups must be email enabled. So in my environment, I'm using Microsoft 365 E5 licenses. So all of my Azure AD users do have Exchange mailboxes that they can get into. And so the policy is going to determine which users or groups get the policy and which labels are available. And again, each label is going to have its own rules in terms of whether it's required or optional, whether it's scanning for potentially sensitive data and auto applying the label, etc. Now, how do these actually work in practice? Let me fire up Microsoft Excel 2019 on this workstation and let me sign in as an account that I know is a co-owner to particular documents. So I'm going to sign in with my credential, and I've got a document here called socials.xlsx that's stored in a shared cloud-based document library. Looks like Azure Information Protection is already 
applied the PII or personally identifiable information label here because I've put some fictional U.S. social security numbers and credit cards. I guess I should have shown you that. For my PII label, I set AIP to look for just those kind of data and if so, automatically apply the PII label. One of the options you can set as an AIP administrator is to allow the user to view their current permission level. Well, anyway, what I'm going to do is sign out as Tim, and I'm going to sign in as an account that has only view permissions on that socials XLSX document. So I'm going to hack around a little bit by reopening Excel 2019 and seeing if I can sign in as a totally different identity, my Melissa lab user. I should tell you that I do have the Azure Information Protection client installed on this machine that I'm teaching from. So if we open up socials, again, it's locked for editing by another user. Not sure why that is, but I'm going to go ahead and save and look what happened. Because Melissa is subject to a policy based on this label, she can't even save it. So it looks like she can view the data. She's got read access so she can view it. But let me see if I can copy and paste. I right clicked. Nope, it's not giving me any options here. But the way that the encryption and the rights management works is that all of those controls that are unavailable to the user are literally grayed out, as you can see on the ribbon and also here in the file menu. To show you what the user-based workflow is for labels, let me open up a new blank workbook as this user. And here we can see an information bar with all of the labels that are available to this user. And as an AIP administrator, you can set a default. So in this case, if I choose all employees, it's going to again talk to the server and now the document has its appropriate label. And lastly, one of the things you can do as an AIP administrator is require justification. If, for instance, Melissa here were to open this document that already was labeled this way, if she wanted to show the labels and then set it to a lower level of privilege, like public, notice that we see justification required. And again, all of these responses are tracked, logged, and audited, and you can generate those reports at any time in Azure Active Directory. For learning resources, check out the AIP basics and the Microsoft Docs, timw.info forward slash AAP1. For a step-by-step -step tutorial on using AIP, go to timw.info forward slash AAP2. And if your business is not yet there as far as having deployed AIP, you'll definitely want to study the requirements. What's required in your client side? What's required in terms of network traffic allowances? All that stuff. You can get the deets at timw.info info forward slash AAP3. All right, Areno. Well, another lesson down. For our next episode, like I alluded to at the beginning of this one, we're going to look at a service that can help remediate or solve the issue of shadow IT or unauthorized applications being used in your organization. And of course, if your users are supporting themselves using unauthorized applications, there's a good chance that they've got questionable software and or documents that could represent a malware threat. So we'll learn all about Azure Advanced Threat Protection or ATP. In the meantime, my Twitter handle is Tech Trainer Tim. You can find my Pluralsight library at timw.info forward slash ps. My website is techtrainertim.com. Happy studying. Thanks again, and I'll see you around.